Twitter is expected to unveil its policy today on banning political ads from its platform. CEO Jack Dorsey announced his decision to ban those ads last month. Right now, joining us for more on how technology is grappling with political messaging as we get closer to the campaign, let's welcome Steve McMahon. He's CEO and co-founder of Purple Strategies. He produced advertising for the Democratic National Committee in support of Barack Obama in the general election. Also, Wall Street Journal reporter Emily Glazer. And uh, folks, welcome. Emily, why don't you start things off for us and just explain what happens. You've got Twitter about to ban these ads. Where do the laws come down, both on a federal and a state laws? That is a great question. It is a complete mess right now. And that's leading up to this huge election where there's going to be billions of dollars in digital political ad spend. Right now, the Federal Election Commission oversees political advertising, but it doesn't even have a quorum to operate. And there aren't full rules for digital political ads. Hmm. And they don't even regulate issues ads. So those are ads from advocacy groups and trade organizations that also fall into all of this. What, what, what are the rules? Because we've had people come in and tell us different things. Some people say the rules are very different for digital versus if you were a publisher or if you're, an adver or if you're a, um, a broadcaster. We've had other people say, no, the rules actually are the same. What, what's the truth? You know, we talked to a lot of people about this for our article, and I can tell you there is no agreement. So what we have learned is that for digital political ads, if it's for an election, a specific candidate, that falls into the Federal Election Commission. They do have some rules on disclaimers and disclosures, but they were debating um, for years, making them more widespread, especially for ads that are in very small spaces. And they never came to any agreement on that. When it comes to issues-based ads, so that could be things around climate change, immigration, education, anything that would come from an advocacy group or uh, a trade organization, there really isn't any uniform policy. And, and in, in the middle, the states have come up with their own uh, policies and, as well. Emily, real quick, one of the things that I've been thinking about is if Facebook or any of these other sites uh, could have a toggle on or off feature so you could decide whether you want to see political advertising and whether you think that that would actually change the dynamic of this entire conversation or whether it would become a slippery slope where all of a sudden users would say, well, I wouldn't be able to turn off all advertising. Andrew, that's a really interesting question and concept. I hadn't thought about that yet. And what we're seeing is that these tech companies are now coming up with their own rules and policies because there isn't anything uniform. Mm -hmm. So right now we've got Facebook saying we won't fact check any political ads, but we're going to let almost everything run pretty much. We've got Twitter expected to come out with their policy later today, banning political ads except for ads around voter registration. So it will be mm -hmm. very interesting to see what they do. And uh, the Wall Street Journal just reported uh, the other week that Google is under discussion to possibly change their political ad policy. Steve. So the tech platforms have a lot at stake. Steve, if, if Twitter has banned these ads, does it matter? I mean, I think they only made $3 million in revenue in 2016. What, what do you think? Well, I actually think it matters because, number one, it's a, it's a really smart, symbolic gesture because the tech industry, as you know, in Washington is now being um, looked at on both sides of the aisle for potential regulation. So I think it was a really smart thing to try to get ahead of this. Plus, it doesn't think, cost them a lot. And, well, it's not going to cost them very much, but, you know, it does put pressure on some of their competitors. One of the things... One of my many flaws, as you guys probably know, is I'm a lawyer, and it's pretty clear what's, what's going on here. I mean, if you're running a television ad for a politician, you have a, a law that says stand by your ad, which basically requires the politician to say, I'm so-and-so and I approve this ad. Mm -hmm. And what, what these digital offerings want to be basically is bulletin boards and not broadcasters or publishers, right. and they're, they're held to a different legal standard by being that. And I think what Dorsey is basically doing is he's saying we have a responsibility here, particularly after what happened in 2016, we have a responsibility to step forward and, and do something to protect democracy. Right. And uh, I think Dorsey did it, is going to do it today, and I think you're going to see other tech companies follow. Steve, Steve I was just, I, I didn't want to, you know, I, I love you. You've been on many, many times. But <laughs> just philosophically, I, I just don't know when the, your, your party, the Democrats, you know, stop being the party of the ACLU and the party of, of, of tolerance and the party of differing opinions. I, I, th I look at college campuses and who's allowed to show up and say anything. I look at the woke and the cancel culture and what you're allowed to say. I, this, is, this is all about $100,000 worth of Facebook ads that no, caused no, Hillary to lose. In two, Joe. Maybe she was a bad candidate, Steve. Maybe no, it no, wasn't she, Facebook's uh, fault. Let me, how about if I just say this? She was, she was not a very good candidate. Okay, let's just, but you're let's just still agree on reeling that, from the two. Hold, no, 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 I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. Here's what I'm, here's what I'm saying. It, 
I'm saying that anybody should be able to say anything they want okay. in political content. But people have the right to know and should okay. expect the publisher of that. Big boys, too. Big boys. And well, girls, but, right? but, you know, one of the things that, that Donald Trump likes to talk about is fake news. And, you know, huh? if you're going to if you're going to say fake news is a problem, then fake news should be a problem, whether it's coming from the left or the right. And what you see on a lot of these sites is fake news. Right. You see articles that are just that are not real. Not, not you know real, what? I, I think not I see fake fact. news in, in major newspapers, Steve. Yeah, well, so maybe maybe. And, but you know what? You know where it's coming from. Fake because news is different Joe, than, uh, than Andrew's fake news. Believe me. But Joe, but you know where it's back. coming from. You know where it's coming from because right. there's a name on it. There's a reporter who wrote it. Okay. You, you know exactly where it's coming from. All right, just these, move on back these a sites, you have no ACL. idea. Just, you have no move idea. Move back a little towards ACLU and towards because, you know, Reagan said fascism was going to start with liberalism. He did. He said that, and I, I know, just don't. Uh, you know, he was exaggerating like you sometimes <laughs> do, Joe. Guys, it's great to see you, Steve. Thank you. Well,